Episode 17. The war is over. Let us have peace. Reconstruction. All interesting topics, topics after the Civil War. And we look at these further. Hello again from Ireland with the P.S. Gilmore story. We're continuing with the uh, story of this man now that the war had ended in 1865 and General Lee had accepted the unconditional surrender and, of course, General Grant had, declared, had been declared the victor on behalf of the Union Army of President Lincoln. A wonderful sigh of relief seemed to sweep across the land that the upheaval of the last few years was at an end and that their men, brothers, husbands and boyfriends could all return home safely now. But as soon as that sigh was exhaled, sadness, shock uh, and fear seemed to invade the public mind. Instantaneously with the news that President Lincoln had been shot by an assassin and now the people's hero, having led them through this nightmare, was on his final journey to Illinois and his resting place. America was in shock. This is the story of America after the Civil War, told in brief and short paragraphs and part of a story which hasn't been mentioned before, at least through the experience of P.S. Gilmore, the man I term, as the unofficial bandmaster general of the Union Army. What was his part in the story and how did he assist? As I've said before, this is only a brief synopsis and a taster to the unbelievable career in America where Gilmore left an impression by changing his adopted country and its legacy in music forever. So, everyone <clears throat> is very welcome back to this, the P.S. Gilmore story, in an episode entitled After the Civil War. And it concentrates on the years 1865 until the end of 1868. As I always do, I ask to click like and subscribe. And remember, you pay nothing when you subscribe, but you help a story which should be told and get notifications of the next episodes as they come out. I thank you so much for this. So, may I remind you of three dates, especially in 1865. April the 9th of 1865, the, lar the end of the largest war in the history of the United States was signalled by the surrender of the Army of Northern Virginia by General Robert E. Lee. Five days later, April the 5th, uh, 14th, the 16th President of the United States of America, President Abraham Lincoln, was assassinated by an actor called Booth. And less than a month later, a month and a half later, on May the 23rd at, and 24th, a new president, Andrew Johnson, sitting beside General Grant, reviewed the victorious Union armies over two days in Washington in an event called the Grand Review of the Armies. It was a surreal occasion of the city and the nation celebrating an end of a dreadful war with delight, but in a city which was draped in mourning for their dead president. You can sense the excitement of the streets from these lithographs but how amongst all the flags and buntings there hangs black crepe from the windows in, in, in a city dressed in mourning for their dead hero. 
And all of this took place with seven musical bands, including Piers Gilmore and his band, that had worked consistently throughout the war on the side of the Union. He still wore the uniform of the 24th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment. And people, uh, sorry, and children from the public schools were obviously coached to sing what was termed appropriate pieces, including Battle Cry of Freedom, Victory at Last, and of course, When Johnny Comes Marching Home. Note that the girls were dressed in white and the boys in white pants and black jackets. And from the review of in the same paper, words will not suffice to explain or express the effect of the review and progress as we write upon the popular mind. The whole population of the city, with the addition of strangers, numbered many thousands and thousands, have been on Pennsylvania Avenue all day the throng being greater by far than any previous occasion. The different generals who have become famous in the course of the war were, of course, the observed of all observers, and each, as he passed, was greeted with loud plaudits from the crowd at many points upon the line. Their war-worn uh, veterans two attracted scarcely less attention and received nearly equal tokens of popular regard. The scene was as deeply impressive of the former dangerous power of the suppressed rebellion as of the military strength of our great country. On emerging from a war of such duration and so destructive, the affair was manifestly one of the grandest popular ovations to the grandest and most efficient patriot armies that ever was paid by any people in either hemisphere. And so each ha hamlet, village, town, city, state, and most of all, family, welcomed home their men with open arms in each location. There were events all so much smaller than that on Penn Avenue, but no less important and vital to healing. In Boston, it continued, General Grant came with his wife and family to let the public know of future plans of the government. What would happen? How would healing begin? Where indeed would the South go and how would it manage without slavery? And in 1867, President Johnson would also tour to again create positivity of the future now that the war was over. Again, <clears throat> speeches would be made, but without a band or a few bands, crowds would not be re attracted. So again, Gilmore's band was obviously an, uh, an obvious attraction. And later in Vermont, General Philip Sheridan would come to uh, Montpelier to unveil some statues to the veterans of the recent conflict. The Statue of America, uh, commemorating the dead and the victorious of the Union, was unveiled with Gilmore's band entertaining as General Sheridan exalted the victory of America and indeed its future. And everyone, can I remind you that while Gilmore was looking at this idea of reconstruction from uh, an audience perspective all the time. He was thinking, how could he help? What could he develop? And for ages he would think and listen to ideas and discussions. 
and yet say nothing. Then one night he had a dream. When it came to him, and he would indeed write the following. In June of 1865, Mr. P.S. Gilmore was passing a few days in the city of New York, and it was at this time that the first thought of a national jubilee to commemorate the restoration of peace throughout the land flashed upon his mind. The carrying out of the idea he well knew would afford an op opportunity for the grandest musical festival the world had ever known. The scenes in which, uh, with which he was then surrounded immediately lost, his, uh, lost their interest and he became absorbed by the grandeur of his conception. The general plan of the scheme, as uh, afterwards adopted, seemed at once to unfold itself. Indeed, had the scenes of Broadway been instantly changed by the wand of a, uh, of a magician, they would not have been transformed into a series of more enchanting, dissolving views than were vividly portrayed to him, like a panorama of the coming event. A vast structure rose before him, filled with the loyal of the land, through whose lofty arches a, a chorus of 10,000 voices and a harmony of a thousand instruments rolled their sea of sound, accompanied by the chimes of bells and the booming of cannon, all pouring forth their praise and grandeur of which music seemed capable. As his imagination reveled in the scenes, his thought pictured every nerve quivered with the intensity of his delight, and he was impressed with all the fervour of religious belief that it was his special mission to carry out the sublime conception. And so... From that, we get a, an idea of what Gilmore wanted to do. Gilmore wished to commemorate the restoration of peace and union throughout the land. The soul that conceived this unprecedented and most stupendous undertaking needed to be aglow with musical fire. So he would say, later in 1889 in a concert program known as Artists of the Jubilee Tour. So, more from this book and about this event next week in episode 18. What had he planned? What would people say to the idea? How big would the event be? Who would pay for it? Most of all, though, what would his beloved wife say? So, please click like and subscribe and thank you so much for your attention. Give me any feedback or, as you've done before, just write to gilmoresband at gmail.com. Thank you so much and take care. Bye-bye.